Today, we're telling you a compelling story about acoustic guitars, Soviet Russia, and Furch. So stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to our channel, make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, and comment below. We make videos that are reviews, demos, comparisons, and my general opinions about what's going on in the guitar market. So if you like that stuff, make sure you stick around and come back for more. We are a real live music company. We've been around since the 1920s and we are the oldest music store in Texas. If you have your favorite music store you shop at, that's great. If you'd like to represent us, make sure that you check out our Teespring store that we partner with here on YouTube, where you can order any shirts like this, which is the storefront of our historic downtown San Antonio location that we've been in since the 1960s. And make sure to visit us at either one of our retail locations or online, we'll be glad to help you find your dream instrument. Today, we are looking at Furch guitars. Yeah, I am quickly becoming a fan of these guitars, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the history. Now, you might have seen Furch guitars around somewhere. Perhaps it was on a YouTube video from a number of great, fantastic European modern fingerstyle players. Maybe it was from an American fingerstyle player. Maybe someone like Kevin Blake Goodwin, a good friend of ours who's won our Guitar Wars competition a few years in a row and has uh, played Furch guitars or Stonebridge guitars as it was previously marketed as uh, throughout the, uh, a lot of his tours and has put them in his videos. You can see that in this Combatica video, which is one of my favorites that he's done. And we'll link to that as well because he's a great artist you should be checking out and a good friend of ours. So Furch guitars might be familiar because they've been around since the 1970s. Um, and they were marketed here in the US under the brand name of Stonebridge. But they are a European manufactured guitar. They're actually made in the Czech Republic. When they were imported initially to the US, I believe it was a marketing idea to rebrand it as Stonebridge. But the only difference between Stonebridge and Furch is that the name that was on the headstock. Now there's been a lot going on in the lineup with Furch guitars that we're gonna talk about. They've been refining their offerings, which I think is a good idea for any manufacturer. You wanna make sure that people can understand what the lineup offers and what's unique about your instruments. They've been doing that and opening a distribution center in Nashville to make sure that there is a great opportunity for those of us who are here in the United States to enjoy these great guitars. Now let's talk a bit, little bit about where they come from. I mentioned, the 1970s. So, in the 1970s, Czechoslovakia was part of the Soviet Union, and you were not allowed to own a company of your own. So here's Frank Furch. He's a metalworker by day, a musician by night, and he's building instruments to suit his own needs because, as Furch says it, in the socialist government of, at the time, there wasn't really a good way of getting a high-quality musical instrument. And I'll leave that to debate amongst yourselves. But he needed to build guitars on his own. And as he did so, people took notice and they wanted his guitars, but he's in the Soviet Union. He cannot own his own business. So under the cover of night in his garage, he secretly builds these guitars and gets them into the hands of musicians. It's like the setup for a great 1980s anti-USSR movie. Anyways, but that's what really was happening. After the fall of the Berlin Wall and the revolution that took place, Czechoslovakia became the Czech Republic, free and open market, and he was able to really build this company into what it is today, continuing to grow it to manufacture fantastic, high-quality acoustic guitars. Now, we can see from the designs that what they've arrived on is effectively a very modern steel string flat top acoustic guitar. It has great articulation and feel to it. 
Most of their models are kind of OM or Grand Auditorium designs, but they also have Dreadnoughts and a few other really unique models in the lineup. Now, recently they went through and changed how the entire series are done. So we're gonna go through four guitars for you and kind of show you what's going on and, and how to understand the lineup from Furch. But it's basically organized not by number, but by the colors of the visible light spectrum. Starting with indigo, violet, then blue, green, yellow, orange, red, and finally rainbow. And rainbow is basically you can have whatever you want, that's their custom program. All of these guitars though, what regardless of the series, have certain things in common. Now they all feature a solid top. From the blue series and up, it's all solid. Or yeah, I think I got that correct. I'm trying to keep this all straight in my head. It's all solid wood. You can double check the specs on our website or Furch's website. Um, the bracing is an entirely proprietary design, um, and there's some interesting stuff going on in the neck that I want to make sure I talk about. But the bracing is an X brace. It has their own unique shapes to it, and it's voiced and tuned for each guitar to bring out the best sound from each guitar. The neck joint is a bolt-on neck. Okay, we've seen this from Taylor since the 70s as well, and some of that, what inspired Bob Taylor with the bolt-on neck and later the NT neck is kind of what's going on here. It's a very different design, but it's going after the same thing. In the heel, you can see this, well, you might not be able to see here, but the neck is actually a two-piece. You have the main neck and then the heel, which is glued on as a separate piece. And in part, that's because there is an aluminum uh, structure that's inside the neck here. And what that does is it helps to create rigidity here at the bend of the neck and the heel, and then the dual action truss rod is encased in a composite sleeve up the neck. The combination of these two things helps to ensure accurate geometry over the life of the guitar. Effectively, what we don't want to happen on an acoustic guitar and what tends to happen, whether it's a bolt-on neck or a dovetail neck or a mortise and tendon neck, is that over time, the forces of the strings on the guitar cause the neck to kind of bend forward and it creates a hinge effect here at the 14th fret. Generally, you try to correct that with some things here down at the saddle uh, and with the truss rod, but it creates a hump here where the neck and the fingerboard kind of diverge. The neck's no longer straight. Playability is uh, sacrificed and so forth. So that's their effort to do it with Furch guitars. And they claim that there's a 93% reduction in uh, either any forward bending or any twisting that may take place due to temperature and humidity with these designs. They also have a great UV cured finish, uh, both in an open pore satin finish and their gloss, which ensures that it's nice and thin and durable so that the guitar is both beautiful but also very resonant. All in all, I'll say this, and then we'll play these guitars for you. I really like the aesthetics, I like the feel, and I like the sound of these guitars. In their lineup, I think I like the Grand Auditorium designs the best, but that's not too surprising because those are the types of guitars I tend to play. Their Dreadnoughts are fantastic as well, and we're gonna play one of those for you today. What you'll find throughout the lineup is a focus on attention, fantastic fit and finish, and really a desire to make a fantastic instrument. And I like that it's coming from Europe. You know, Martin was started by Christian Frederick Martin that left Europe and came to the U.S. and had learned his craft from violin makers over there, but guitars were kind of looked down upon. It almost seems like it's kind of come full circle now with some European makers really putting out some fantastic instruments. And I really like to see what's coming out from Furch. I also like that they are uh, doubling down on the brand name. It's a good one. I love the logo. I like the guitars. We're going to put them through their paces so you can make a decision for yourself. Check it out.
So there you have it, Furch guitars. Now in their lineup, all of the features do vary a little bit. So when we looked at the Indigo and the Violet, those are solid tops with laminate back and sides. And like a lot of manufacturers, they're actually pushing a bowl into the back, which eliminates the need for bracing, giving you the structural rigidity you need, something that you can't do with a solid piece of wood, but you can easily do with layered back and sides. Helps projection, lightness of guitar, and so on and so forth. Now what we found, or what I have found, is that the um, both the Indigo and the Violet series, which are the laminate back and side ones, are unique instruments in and of themselves. They really kind of have a unique voice, and I think a lot of that's the the body shape design and the pairing of the tone woods. Now, one thing that we should stress, the way that Furch is doing this with their lineup right now is that they each series has what's called a master uh, designed guitar. Um, and that is basically the flagship of that series. So this one, for instance, is the flagship of the Violet series, no, the Indigo. And it is this uh, kind of OM or auditorium shape with a solid cedar top and laminate African mahogany back and sides. If you want this series in a different body shape, it's available, but then it's no longer considered the master's choice, so to speak. It's now part of that series, and it's it's your choice. So uh, maybe your choice is, is different. Maybe you're your own master. That's okay, you can be that. So anyways, if you'd like some more uh, information about Furch Guitars, make sure you visit our website at alamomusic.com. We'll have all of these that I've played there up available as well as information on the rest of their lineup um, and information on how you could build your own Rainbow Series fully custom Furch Guitar as well. Um, all in all, I'll say this. I'm excited for this series of guitars. I remember playing a Taylor guitar when nobody knew who Taylor Guitars was. And I remember owning an Apple computer when nobody had ever heard of what an Apple computer was. There's something special about kind of getting in before anybody else does. Maybe it's just our own arrogance. Maybe we just like to feel smarter than everybody else for a little bit of time. But what's special about those examples that I gave is that eventually other people catch on of how great some of those instruments or technology, what have you, can be. And I have these guitars in our store right now because I kind of get that feeling with Furch. I think these are great guitars. I think uh, they're starting to gain popularity, and I think at some point, a lot more people are gonna know that, not just us. So, like I said, if you have questions, go to our website, uh, contact us, come in the store, give us a call, what have you, homing pigeon, any of that works, we'll answer all of it, Maybe not the pigeon. Um, but until that time, if you are new to our channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, uh, like and comment below. We wanna hear from you. We wanna help you find the guitar of your dreams. At the end of the guitar, or at the end of the guitar, at the end of the day, the best guitar is the one that you are playing and you're making music on, and that's what we wanna make happen. So keep it up. I'll see you next time.